So this is a class 10 CBSE curriculum chapter, carbon and its compounds. And in that, there's a deeper dive to understand ethanol. Um, here we'll be focusing on the chemical properties of ethanol, which is C2H5OH. So that's uh, the second member of the alcohol series. And um, if you were wondering what chemical properties are, you may have studied before this, the physical properties, which is uh, how does it look? It looks colorless. How does it smell? It smells pleasant. How does it taste? It has a burning taste. It's sort of like judging um, the compound by its cover. But when you're talking about chemical properties, it's more like trying to really figure a person out. So if you're trying to figure a person out, you'll be like, how will this person react in a given situation? Uh, what can I know about this person? And that's kind of what chemical properties are, to kind of figure out how the compound, how the compound or substance reacts in each of these cases. So to understand the chemical properties of ethanol, which is C2H5OH, you can see the structure there, CH3. C with two H's and then the one OH or the hydroxyl group. Um, there are five reactions, but just before that, I want you to get familiar with how this is written. So you can write it as C2H5OH, or you can see below CH3CH2OH. If you see that, you know, again, we're talking about ethanol. And one other kind of unique way, uh, which is less common, but you will also see it, especially in tests, uh, when they're asking you to figure out what they're, talk they're talking about. Uh, they, it could be written as C2H6O, which is a little confusing because you don't see the hydroxyl group. Uh, but if you see it here, you kind of know that this is what they're talking about. So it becomes easier to recognize it. So just keep this in mind and we'll jump right into the five reactions. And so we're going to go right there. This is the first reaction. So C is for combustion. Combustion means burning in the air. It, uh, it does combust, it's uh, uh, pretty flammable. Uh, it burns with a blue flame. You can see burns written in blue type so that you will remember that it burns with a blue flame. Uh, so if you have C2H5OH, uh, it takes in the oxygen from the air and when something burns, what do you get? On the right hand side, you can see carbon dioxide. There's three molecules of water and then it releases a lot of heat and light. Uh, the one way to check that you wrote the equation right is to ensure that you get two carbons on the left, two carbons on the right, six hydrogen atoms on the left, and six hydrogen atoms on the right. So you, if you get that uh, and you understand that, okay, combined with oxygen, I got carbon dioxide, water, heat, and light, you'll probably get the equation right. Uh, and because it burns uh, as well as it does, it is used in some fuels as a petrol additive. Um, and you can see that car, it's also used in spirit lamps actually. Uh, well, one piece of trivia is that you have something called E85, which is actually 85% ethanol and 15% gasoline, with which actually uh, vehicles called flexible fuel vehicles can run on this. Um, so that's something to know. With that, we come to the second reaction, which is O is for oxidation. Uh, oxidation essentially means that it takes in oxygen and what you get uh, is supposed to be the oxidized form uh, of whatever got oxidized. So in this case, you see ethanol on the left in purple again, uh, takes in two atoms of oxygen and here you're going to need an oxidizing agent. So that could be either be alkaline potassium permanganate or it could be acidic potassium dichromate. And you would get ethanoic acid, which is what you see on the, on the right. And this actually you might know as acetic acid or vinegar, um, but the, the more formal name would be ethanoic acid. And you get water. What you're going to see below here um, is sort of like the slow motion version of the same thing. And you can see ethanol on the left uh, gives up that water molecule, takes in an oxygen atom, and you get CH3CHO, which is what's called an aldehyde. Uh, you'll be learning more about that further down, the carbon and compounds chapter. And then it takes in another oxygen atom to give you ethanoic acid. So what happens uh, when ethanol gets oxidized is to give you ethanoic acid, and sort of that midway junction is an aldehyde. Um, if you were wondering why the potassium permanganate was alkaline, uh, is because it, it, that's when it's a weak oxidizing agent and you need it to be weak, uh, while acidic potassium permanganate, which is also an oxidizing agent, is extremely strong and you don't really need that, mu that much strength here. The third reaction you need to care about is E is for esterification. Uh, that's when ethanoic acid, what we just learned about when ethanol gets oxidized. If it combines with ethanol in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid, uh, and this would actually happen in a warm bath because it needs some heat, but you're not going to um, 
set it on fire. It needs to sort of be that kind of warm bath kind of heat. Uh, it gives up its water molecule, as you can see, and it forms the ethanoic, the CH3COO acetate part of it combines with the ethyl part of it uh, to give you CH3COOC2H5, which is uh, ethyl ethanoate or ethyl acetate. Ethyl or ethyl doesn't really matter. Different people say it different ways. Uh, what this is, is an ester, and it has a characteristically sweet smell. Uh, you'll see test with a star next to it, which means that this is going to be one of your key tests for ethanol. So if there is uh, a problem that says uh, there's this liquid, uh, you need to identify it. It combines with an acid in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid. Uh, it, and when warmed in a bath, it gives a sweet smelling compound. What is it? It's ethanol, because what you just got was an ester. Uh, and a quick interesting piece of trivia is that butyl acetate, for some reason, uh, smells like pineapples, and that hopefully acts as a memory aid for you to remember esterification. The fourth reaction here is D is for dehydration, uh, where you, can, you have ethanol again, CH3CH2OH. The dehydrating agent here is concentrated sulfuric acid. You know, you used it before uh, in esterification, but here it acts as a dehydrating agent when all you have is ethanol on the left. Um, and you, it's heated up to 170 degrees centigrade, which is pretty, pretty hot, and you get an unsaturated hydrocarbon. You can see in the bottom, uh, I've also shown sort of structurally how this works out, and you can see how the H and the OH from the top, that's H2O, uh, it gives up that water molecule, and on the right-hand side, the carbon then bonds to itself, because it has to do something, you know, it's kind of like Lego, and they kind of, it needs the four links. So the, the way that happens is by forming ethene, uh, which is the unsaturated hydrocarbon, which is what happens in the dehydration reaction. This is the final reaction. You can see number five. S is for the reaction with sodium. So ethanol, I've uh, kind of drawn what that looks like. You can see in a test tube, you have ethanol. This is the left side bottom. Uh, you add sodium, and you should have what's called rapid effervescence, which is what happens when you uh, put an antacid like eno in water. Uh, you have that fizzing thing happen, and the gas that comes out is colorless and odorless, uh, so how would you know that it's hydrogen? The way to know is to take a burning splinter to it and you should hear a pop sound. Uh, then you know that's hydrogen and that's another test for ethanol. The first one was the esterification uh, where you get the sweet smelling ester and the second one is this pop sound. Um, so if hydrogen is what is released then you know that what you had to start off with was ethanol. Uh, just let's look at the reaction here. So you have two molecules of ethanol plus two sodium atoms uh, together will give you sodium ethoxide. Uh, C2H5ONA plus uh, and the hydrogen gas which is released. So this would be the other test. And with that you have the five reactions. To close this out, I just have a quick recap. Um, so the chemical properties of ethanol was what this video was about. Uh, it, it, it's a lot to hold in your head, yes, uh, and, some, and you have to do that for an exam. Uh, so I have a mnemonic or sort of a memory aid which is codes. Uh, that was the one, two, three, four, five that we went through. So C for combustion, uh, co-ed, sorry. Uh, C for combustion, O for oxidation, E for esterification, D for dehydration, and S for sodium. Uh, the two stars tell us that they're the tests. And um, hopefully you will remember this and the exam uh, will prove to be uh, uh, relatively easy.